At the moment, we are watching a rhino holocaust. I refuse to sit back and have to explain myself to the next generation when they ask me, well, what were you doing while rhinos went extinct? And to have to say nothing. I thought, I thought someone else was taking care of it. The last few years have seen a 5,000% increase in rhino poaching, most of which is happening in South Africa. Conservation officials are becoming desperate. Emotions are running high. Debates as to whether legalizing the trade in rhino horn will help rage on. But on the ground, conservationists are looking for ever more radical means to help save this iconic species. One of these initiatives is the Rhino Rescue Project, started by Lorinda Hearn and vet Dr. Charles Vanniekirk. Their idea? To infuse rhino horn with toxin and dye, thereby rendering it useless as a trophy and making it highly dangerous to consumers. Rhino Rescue Project started in 2010 largely as the result of a loss of, of one of our own animals to poaching. Um, up until that point we hadn't really had poaching in our area and we didn't really see it as something that would ever happen to us. And of course um, then it did. Oh, there was panic, uh, what are we going to do, we need to protect the rest of our animals. Often when there's been one poaching incident uh, more inevitably follow. And we started going through all of those measures that were available to us at the time. Okay, well, maybe we should dehorn, but we make our living largely out of ecotourism, so we don't want to dehorn. Um, microchips and tracking devices and DNA samples. And the problem we had with all of those were that they were largely reactive in nature. So they wouldn't prevent an animal from dying, they would only inform us after it had. And so the idea came about, well, you know, what if we could, we could contaminate these horns in some way so that uh, poachers wouldn't, wouldn't benefit from, from poaching the animal because they couldn't sell the horn on. Not only is the horn no longer valuable for aesthetic purposes, but if it's consumed, it's highly toxic to humans. The Sabi Sands Private Game Reserve is one of the first reserves in South Africa to pilot the horn infusion project. Sabi Sands has no border fences with its neighbor, the Kruger National Park, where most of South Africa's rhinos live and are being poached. Infusing a rhino's horn is a delicate process which requires a good deal of teamwork. First, the rhinos have to be tracked down in this huge reserve. The easiest way to do this is from a helicopter and dart the rhinos from the air. It only takes a few minutes for the tranquilizing drug to take effect, so the ground team has to move quickly. The animal's safety is the top priority and the rhino is monitored and kept cool throughout the entire procedure. So Dean drills all the way into the core and then we attach these probes to which the infusion device is then attached. I'm putting in a clean drill bit that we get in every DNA kit so that we can uh, obtain some horn material for a DNA sample. The drill bit has to be clean so that there's no cross-contamination with any other samples. So along with the horn material, we also collect hair samples and a tissue sample in the form of a little notch that we cut into the ear. A lot of effort goes into the horn infusions, but for Lorinda, Doing nothing is not an option. 
Seeing these magnificent animals slaughtered so violently and cruelly for a body part that scientifically has absolutely no medicinal value whatsoever is sometimes more than she can bear. I don't think you can explain to someone that's never seen it in, in real life the, the sheer devastation of, of coming across that, that carcass of an animal that you know and have grown up with and suddenly you have to take a second look because you can't, you can't figure out which animal you've lost. Half of her face is, is gone. And along with the sheer sadness of losing her, you felt in a way that we had failed her. We were meant to protect her and we didn't. So, yeah, didn't want that same fate for the rest of our animals. I did not want to feel helpless with the next animal. I didn't want to feel a sense of guilt and shame that I could have done something to protect it and instead I left it a sitting duck. The project has its critics, mostly from those saying it's costly and time consuming. Each rhino infusion comes with a price tag of around 1,400 US dollars. The whole procedure takes around 40 minutes to an hour to complete, and with a rhino population of around 18,000, it's going to take a lot of time to get around to all of them. Lorinda and Dr. Vanniekirk also don't make a profit from this. It's a labor of love and desperation. The traditional means of addressing it wasn't, wasn't working. I don't know if, if anything really is. So lots of people say to us, oh, you know, what you're doing is just a, a drop in the ocean. Isn't that what oceans are? Just a bunch of drops. And we're all trying to do our little thing on the ground. And I must believe that for the 200 plus animals we've treated thus far, we are making a difference. Rhino horn infusion has also been adopted by the government of South Africa and the program is being rolled out in reserves in KwaZulu-Natal. It is undoubtedly one of the more radical strategies being used to stop rhino poaching and only time will tell if it works. Here we go. Done.